So let's go ahead and prep for the test. I'm going to go over the study guide. On this one, we see we need to isolate our variable. We'll add three fourths to both sides. We need common denominators. We know that's going to be 12. I know that 4 times 3 is 12, so I'll take 3 times 3, and that'll give me 9. That's a positive 9 over 12. Then I know that 3 times 4 equals 12, so I'll have to take 1 times 4. That'll give me a negative 4 over 12. 9 minus 4 is 5, so z is equal to 5 over 12. Let's go to this one. Pretty easy to isolate my variable. I'll divide by 5 on both sides. And g has to equal 4. And number 3, uh, I put this to where you could do it two ways. Uh, one is the way that we, you know what, I'm just going to teach you one way. I don't want you to learn it this way. Uh, in fact, I'm just going to take this totally out of here. And just because I think the other way kind of confused many of you, made you make some mistakes. So if you do it this way, I know that uh, you're sure to get it right. We're going to distribute properties, right? So this is going to be 6 plus 5m plus 5 is equal to 26. Remember the 6 plus 5 is 11. So now I have 5m plus 11 equals 26. I'm going to subtract 11 from both sides. That's going to give me 5m is equal to 15. Then I'm going to divide by 5 to isolate my variable. And that's going to give me 3. All right, let's go to number 4. Number 4 is one of those where we have to remember uh, this is going to be a positive or negative answer here. So first thing we need to do is get rid of this and leave the absolute value all by itself. We're going to add 7 to both sides. This gives me 1 third y minus 2, or I should say the absolute value of 1 third y minus 2, is going to be equal to 10. Now this is our formula here. Please don't go back to this. So first we've got uh, 1 third y minus 2 equals 10. Then we have 1 third y minus 2 equals a negative 10. All right, uh, to solve this one, we'll add 2 to both sides. Actually, to solve both of them, we'll add 2 to both sides, won't we? When I add 2 to this side, I get 12. So now I got 1 third of y is equal to 12. On this side, I have one third of y, but it will be equal to negative 10 plus 2, which is negative 8. Uh, to get rid of this one third, I need to multiply it to the inverse, which is 3 over 1. So I could just put 3, and whatever I multiply to one side, I do the other. This will give me y is equal to 36. For those that don't get it, if it was 3 over 1, I could, right? Cross that out, and it leaves y, uh, which means I'll multiply by 3 on this side as well, which will give me a negative 24. All right, the reason I said not to go back up here is we have to take this right here, and I'm going to highlight it for us, and make sure that when we plug our answers in, they will equal that amount. So I know that 36 over here, um, 130 of 36 would be 12, and 12 minus 2 is 10. Over here, I could say if y is negative 24, right, um, then I can say that that's negative 24 minus 2. Oh wait, I'm sorry. A one third of negative 24 would be negative 8, and then negative 8 minus 2 would be negative 10. The absolute value of negative 10 is 10. So that works for both of them. Let's go to number five now. Solve the literal equation for y. I'm looking for y. Okay? When I do this, I need to get rid of everything that's with 
y. So the first thing I'm going to do is add my 18x to both sides. When I do this, 2y will be by itself. It's going to equal, well, I could put 18x minus 26. Next, I'm going to divide by 2 to get y by itself, which means I'll divide this side by 2. Well, now I can divide all these numbers by 2. 18 divided by 2 is 9, so that leaves me with 9x. And 26 divided by 2 is 13. So that would give me a negative 13, and that should be my answer. Number 6 says solve the equation for x. This time we're looking for x. Much the same way, we're going to add b to both sides. This gives me ax equals b plus 12.5. Next, I'm going to divide a away so I can get x by itself. And whatever I divide from one side, to the other. And that's pretty much my answer. I can't do nothing to that. So B plus 12.5 divided by A. All right, let's go to number 7. The difference, we said write and solve the equation. The difference, remember difference means subtraction, of 3 times a number, well, that's 3X, and 4, so that's minus 4, remember we're doing subtraction, is, is an equal sign, right? Negative 19. Then it says to solve it, right? So not just to write it, solve it. That means I'll add 4 to both sides. 3x is going to equal negative 15. I'll divide 3 away from both sides. And x is going to equal negative 5. All right, I'll double check my work. If, three, uh, if negative 5 is x, then 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. And negative 15 combined with negative 4 will be negative 19. This is perfect. All right, I'm off to do number uh, 8. Now it says the two shops each charge a rental fee plus an hourly fee to rent a canoe. How many hours must the canoe be rented for the total cost at both shops to be the same? So I need these to be equal to each other. Well, shop A has a rental fee of $6. and an hourly fee of $3. So that's 3x. I don't know how many hours. I could, I guess, change x to be h to represent hours. And I'm going to add that to 6. Over here, uh, $2 an hour plus $7. Uh, to work these, I'm going to want h to be positive, so I'm going to minus 2h from both sides because I know I'll get a positive variable. Next, I'll isolate my variable. It tells me H is 1. That means, uh, when it asks me how many hours must a canoe be rented for the total cost to be the same, one hour. Don't forget your unit of measure. Number nine, consider the equation. The absolute value of 4x plus 20 equals 6x. Without solving it, how do you know that x equals negative 2 is extraneous solution? An extraneous solution. Well, first, let's remember what an extraneous solution is. Well, this really uh, did this the wrong way, didn't it? I'm hoping by shrinking this a little bit, it'll make it easier to read. There you go. An extraneous solution is an apparent solution that must be rejected because it does not satisfy the original equation. So how can you tell, uh, it says without solving it, how do you know that x equals negative 2 uh, is not going to go ahead and be, uh, is going to be an extraneous solution? Um, I'm thinking it's because we have variables on both sides, okay? Um, and that's going to make a difference in this thing. Let's go ahead. It says, 
how do you know that x equals negative 2 is extraneous? So let's solve this thing. We have um, 4x plus 20 is going to equal 6x. And then, of course, we have 4x plus 20 is going to equal negative 6x. All right. <clears throat> when we do this, we realize that we're going to be combining like terms on opposite sides, right? So a minus 4x giving us 20 is equal to 10x because 4 minus 2 is, I'm sorry, 2x. Uh, 6 minus 4 is 2x. On this side, we're going to divide by 2 which means we divide by 2 on this side, right? And that's going to give us 10 equals x, all right? But over here, um, we see that we're going to be doing the same thing, negative 4x, right? But this time, we know we're going to get a negative 10x. This is where they got that negative 2 from. Because we're dividing a negative 10 away. And that's going to give us negative 2 equals x. And why doesn't that work? Well, think about this. If I put a negative on this side, right, and then I'm going to put a negative on this side, and this is where this negative comes in, I'm going to end up with a negative answer. There's no absolute uh, value answer that turns out negative. And that's why we know the minute it said negative 2, right, that there's no way that we were going to get a negative uh, answer from an absolute. Let's watch it out. Work it out. If we got a negative 2, this would be uh, 4x, and that would, x would be negative 2, right, uh, plus 20, and, and that would have to equal, right, uh, we're saying 6x, right? So... When we do this, we're going to get a negative 8 plus 20, right? And that's going to be uh, 12 equals 6x, right? Um, but when we do that, and remember, this is absolute value sign, right? Oh, sorry, over here, absolute value sign. So in essence, we wouldn't even get 12. I apologize for that. I forgot that little step. I want you to watch very carefully here. We have a negative 8 plus 20. Hold on a second. That's going to give us a 12, we said, right? That's positive 12 after its absolute value, right? But if this is negative 2, then we get a negative 12 over here. You see how that's not going to work? And that's why a negative number is not going to give us the right answer, okay? So you'll know that for the test. The perimeter, P in yards, of the soccer field is represented by the formula P equals 2L plus 2W, where L is the length and W is the width. So let's write that out. P equals 2L plus 2W. It says L is the length and W is the width. Solve for W. We want to solve for W. So instantly, we got to get rid of the 2L and minus 2L from this side, which means we'll minus 2L from this side. Now we got negative 2L is going to be equal to, oh, I'm sorry, negative 2L plus P. It's going to be equal to 2W. And then we'll have to divide 2 away. When we divide 2 away, um, we'll get W, right? Um, I could leave it like this, or I could say that um, negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1, so negative L plus, um, I would have to divide 1 by 2, that would be 1 half P, and that would be equal to W. So as the perimeter of the soccer field is 330 yards, find the width of the field. Well, the width, if this is the formula for the width, I can simply take 
330 yards for the perimeter, right? <clears throat> see here. The perimeter of the soccer field is represented by the form of 2L plus 2W. So we're talking about a rectangular field where we know we're going to have uh, W, right? And uh, length in yards, and W is the width. Okay, so that makes sense for the perimeter because we're going to have two of these, two of these. Now it's saying we need to find the width. Um, so the perimeter of the soccer field is 300. So it's saying all the way around, this perimeter is 330, okay? It says, what is the width? Okay, well, if the perimeter is 330, I got negative L plus one half times 330 is going to equal W. Um, this will give you negative L plus, well, half of 330 is going to be, um, let's see, 1, and it goes in at once with 130 left over. That would be 6, and then 5, 165. I believe that's, yes, let me double check, 165 times 2 should give me 330. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Um, and that's going to equal W. It says, what is the width of the field? It says, the perimeter in yards. Soccer is represented by this. Um, L is the length. They don't really tell you. Um, yeah, they don't really tell you what the length is for you to go ahead and solve for it. Uh, negative L plus 160. Uh, equals the width. So whatever we could say 165 minus L, right? Minus the length. Yes, 165 yards minus the length will equal W. And that's really all you can do because they don't give you any other numbers to work with here. Number 11, a cargo truck is traveling at 70 miles per hour, and that's 70 miles per hour. Plane, and a plane travels uh, 840 miles, okay? Let's check this out. A uh, plane travels 840 miles, so that's a distance. Plus or minus, oh boy, plus or minus 105 miles. Okay. So a cargo truck is traveling 70 miles per hour. Oh, I'm sorry, not a plane. And plans to travel, oh my gosh, so embarrassing, uh, to travel 840 miles, plus or minus. Okay. So we're minusing 840 because we're traveling that distance, right? And this is going to be plus or minus 105. All right, uh, depending on the fuel. Find the minimum and maximum number of hours. Okay, so to do this, I'm going to solve um, 70H minus 840 equals 105. And we're going to have 70H minus 840 equals negative 105. All right. Um, when we do this, we're going to add 840 to both sides. On this side, this is going to be, well, 5, 4, 945. On this side, I'm going to add 840. I'm going to be subtracting it from 105, right? Uh, let's see, 10 minutes, so that would be 5. Um, we'll be borrowing one from here, so that would be a 3. 
and then we'll be taking one from here. That would be a seven. Let's just make sure five plus five is zero, carry the one, that would be the four, and then seven plus one, yes. Uh, so that's going to be equal to 70 H. All right, uh, we're going to go ahead and do a little calculations here. So the first one says 945, and we're going to divide that by 70. That equals 13 and a half. So that's 13 and a half hours. All right, over here, when we divide by 70, we're taking uh, 735 and dividing it by 70, which gives us 10 and a half. So 10 and a half hours. So uh, the minimum number of hours uh, is going to be 10, 10 and 1 half, 2, 13 and 1 half hours. Uh, so I'm going to put uh, 10 hours and 30 minutes, or 13 hours and 30 minutes, same thing. Uh, 12. The perimeter of the school crossing side is 120. So totally around here is 120. What is the length of each side? Well, we know that we can take everything and equal it to 102. For some reason, I said 120 multiple times, but after looking at it, it is 102. So we got two of these that are S plus 6. So I can put 2 times S plus 6. We also have two of these that are S's, so I can put plus two S's, then I have uh, two S here, so another plus two S. I'm going to add all these together. Uh, this is two times S, which is two S, and two times six, which is plus 12. Uh, I know two S plus two S is actually four S. I also know I can add my 2s and my 4s to make 6s. I'll subtract 12 from both sides to isolate my variable. That'll give me 90. I'll divide by 6 to both sides. And this is going to equal 1.0. <clears throat> 6 times 5 is 30, and this is 3 times as much. So I think it's probably going to be 15. And I'll double check with my calculator. 90 divided by 6. 15. Perfect. All right. So that means, remember, it says what is the length of each side. It doesn't ask you to find just S. So I know this side is 15. I know this, this is 15 plus 6. So this is going to actually equal 21, which means this is 21, this is 15, and this is 2 times 15, which is 30. So my sides are going to be um, 21, 15, these are all in degrees, oh no, these are lengths, sorry. 21, 15, 30, 15, and 21. All right? Uh, and it doesn't say inches or anything. Oh, yes, it does say inches. All right, so these are all in inches. And it looks like that's all the ones for the quiz. Hope that helped you prepare for it. See you in class and good luck.